Hi guys, welcome to another Warton Studios video. I've got a quick little speed stop going on of a sci-fi giant I recently stopped at. I just thought you guys might be interested in watching sort of the entire process. I've sculpted this all in VR, a uh, bit of software called Medium. Really, really intuitive. Um, lovely bit of software for any of you with a Rift or a Vive. Totally, totally worth it. Check it out. It's amazing. Um, I've got a little mannequin here. I've just cut that mannequin up and posed it into the final pose. I quite enjoy single pose sculpting. It's, it's really natural. It's much more like the actual clay experience. Uh, I'm not such a fan of T-posing unless it's something like a generic soldier that I'm going to want in several poses. So, you know, for character models, stuff like that, I do like to do a single pose kind of sculpt. It's kind of, it suits the way I like to work. So, I've got my basic pose going on. You can see I've chucked up a reference with just some muscle groups. And whilst I am following that, this guy is going to be distorted and out of shape and deliberately some muscles are going to be overinflated. I mean, I, you'll see as the sculpt progresses that this, this <laughs> doesn't stick to normal proportions. He's like, uh, he's a giant, he's under mind control, he's been definitely operated on and experimented with. He's sort of a bit of an aberration. So I've gone for big overinflated muscles and I'm also going for a kind of drawn, withered kind of look. I'm just roughly forming out the face now. I know straight away he's holding his head, it's off to the side, he's got this migraine thing going on or he's fighting the mind control maybe. So I'm going for quite a sort of tortured expression on his face but also a bit, you know, over exaggerated and comical in places. So I spend a little bit of time now tweaking the pose playing about with muscle shapes. I think this whole section probably took me about half an hour to get to a point where I was reasonably happy with him. It's sped up here, obviously. Uh, yeah, just working away. Uh, I'm going to have to chuck some tunes in the background as well. Just so you guys aren't too bored watching it. You can see here one of the huge advantages of VR sculpting over traditional sculpting in the likes of Blender or ZBrush. I can literally, at the click of a button, create geometry, which in something like ZBrush you can't. You have to import an object and then manipulate that object to be the shape that you know that you've got in your mind. Whereas in VR, you pull the trigger and geometry appears wherever you want it. It's literally like taking a piece of clay and adding it to your sculpt. And I can't, it doesn't come across so well when you're watching these things back. The first time I, I, I put the VR headset on, I was astounded. I was holding the clay in my left hand and sculpting it with my right hand and it's just so nice. It's right back to learning to sculpt right at the beginning. I mean, the first things I ever sculpted were at school. And it's right back to that experience of the object in your hand. It's, it's fantastic. It's a lovely, liberating experience. And it's fast. I, I'm not, by a long shot, the world's best sculptor, but... I'm also not the world's fastest sculptor. It's something like this would have taken me a couple of sessions in ZBrush of faffing about and doing this and doing that and maybe, you know, maybe two or three days of a few hours a day. This guy, I base meshed from start to finish to the point where, I mean, at the end I'll, I'll show you the final renders and a printed version. I had that all there in one day. I started this about four hours later, it was on the printer printing. Now, I mean, that, for my workflow at least, is a huge increase in speed. Uh, I'm just cutting out some recesses and I've put the eyes in as a separate sub tool. 
or on a separate layer I should say for, for medium so that I can actually sculpt those eyelids over the top of the eyeball without without it joining and becoming part of the eyeball so it stays separate it can be moved and changed altered or smoothed or whatever without ever affecting the actual eyeball it's really useful it's, it's something I use a lot for clothing teeth this tongue fingernails or things I want to stay crisp and distinct get them on a separate layer or you know as a separate tool so to speak and you can work on one part without affecting the other and vice versa I right, talking to teeth I'm chucking in his teeth now uh, you see me draw out the tongue there a second ago tongue back in just basically made it visible again so those teeth are they exist underneath his tongue so if I wanted to move his tongue about his mouth the teeth would be there underneath complete right, what, I'm, what I've done here I've got a stamp of an ear and stamps are another incredible thing within the medium world they sort of a bit like an insert mesh brush but a, a bit not as well sort of unique to medium or at least I've not come across anything quite like that I mean, there's different facial expressions I've got all the tech that I put on him later is is basically all stamps. It's, it just all adds to the speed. It all adds to it being really fast. And obviously, when you've stamped something, it's mesh. Then you can go in and alter that with any of the tools that you'd use for altering the rest of the model. Still playing with that muscle structure. It's sort of trying to find that bridge between over exaggerated and yet still following the actual muscle groups and getting it sort of to a degree realistic yeah, hands blooming hands they're a nightmare they're a bugger to sculpt they're a bugger to rig up somebody's talking to me Throwing those fingernails on again as a separate layer so that I can sculpt around them and sculpt on the finger if I wanted to or move the hands without damaging that sort of crisp line between finger and nail. And it helps with the printing process when you've got that super crisp line, especially on FDM printing where it's going to struggle getting fine detail anyway. Every little thing you can do to help it along the way is, is, is no bad thing. Building up a little more muscle structure, again try to get a bit of an emaciated look to his, to his form. Right, I've duplicated an exact copy of the body. I've then hidden the original and I'm chopping off the torso and the feet and that's just leaving the trousers section. I then switch on the original body and I'm using an inflate brush which is just making the mesh that bit bigger which is allowing me to basically use that copy as the foundation for my trousers. Uh, I jump in here with the move brush. Obviously, I've locked off that underneath layer, so none of that is changing. And you see, I'm just sticking it up around some holes I've made in the trousers. Some deliberate, some not. But I had a few that sort of appeared, and I thought, oh, yeah, I like this. So I worked with that. You can see I've cut a few more holes in here, I've right raggeded his trousers up. Again, I'm using a stamp here, but uh, a stamp of a rock, I think. But this time I'm using it to 
be an erase tool to cut chunks out of his trousers back down to that original base mesh. Sticking it up the edges so there's nice definition when it prints out. And tweaking the hem on his trousers. I'm quite an issue with this bit down here actually. It took me quite a while to eventually get that sorted. I think what it was, was the way I was trying to pull it was pulling it super thin. So I had to get back in there with the inflate brush uh, in a little while and just sticking it back out so that I got that compromise of where I wanted the mesh and also thick enough that it was going to be manifold. Uh, I'm drawing on basically like a, a rope belt. I mean, there's loads of ways you, you can do this. You can get like um, a curved tool that would automatically chucking that curve that you could then manipulate and it would be patterned but yeah old school I wanted it hand drawn I wanted it hand textured just because really because that's sort of the, the, the mode I was in at the time I don't want to start throwing it into other bits of software and creating curves and you just get in there and and do it and the end result the end look I kind of like it's much more reminiscent of hand sculpted stuff, like sculpted out of green stuff, which is something I'm a huge fan of anyway. As I go around the waist, texturing this rope, you'll notice that I stop quite a few times and just fix little things like this little hole here. Obviously because I'm working so zoomed in on that rope, I can see all the little detail that I might not have noticed before. And it gives me the opportunity while I'm in there to just get in there, quickly fix, and then move on. It saves having to remember where all these issues are later. And you can see me now going in with the inflate brush and the smooth brush to uh, fix out those trousers. And make sure that they're thick enough to print properly, good and manifold. He's having a good look around the model, see if we can see anything else. Really obvious. Yeah, a few little tweaks to his head. Make it a bit more interesting of a shape. The rest of the model's all out of proportion and messed up, so it makes sense that he would be too. His head would be too. Okay, I'm 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 liking it where it is now. It's time to start dropping in. I mean, I've called this layer tech. The experiments that have been done to the guy to make him like mind controlled. I'm gonna stamp all these on. Real simple, you see, I'll apply my stamp and then push it into the model. That way I know I've got no holes underneath it. It absolutely intersects with the model. And obviously when I then combine that, it's going to be one solid manifold model. Which is a huge issue with stamps, is getting a good manifold end result. And there are ways of fixing it you could take the finished model and retopo a low poly version and then project all your details onto it. That would certainly give you the detail and the manifold end result. But why go through all that hassle if you just get it right the first time? work here or some cabling I should say which is not easy on some of these bending sections because 
they are twisting all over the place. But it's a doable thing. We got there in the end. Because it's a separate layer, I can adjust just the cable in to make sure it's sitting right again. I'm thinking of the printer. I'm thinking it needs to be all one solid continuous piece. Okay, again, like I did with the rope round his waist, this could easily have been created as a curve. Um, that curve given a repeat of this stamp and just then traced in the path I wanted to follow. But again, why go through all the extra step when there are ways of doing it right there and then? And the scale the guys printed out, that will look fantastic. There's nothing else needed. Maybe if the guy was going to be like um, yeah, a big scale bust, I would consider going for the more refined approach to some of these things. Like this tech on his chest, it's probably the only bit that I didn't really have an idea of what it does. Yeah, but I did quite like the whole tortured, punctured through look that it sort of gave. So they ended up staying, even though I can sort of discern what all the other bits of tech sort of are meant to do. I, I've got no use for that. I don't know what it is. But as I say, I like the look, so it stays. Chucking a few bits and bobs on his belt. And we're going to put the bomb in his hand. I mean, since I've finished this sculpt, I've decided I'm going to go back here and make the hands and feet a little larger. Uh, which will make that bomb a little larger as well. Just, I'm going to deliberately make them out of proportion. Just something about the model. I think it would, now he's printed and I've seen him, I think it would make him look pretty cool. But realistically, with the tech done, that's... That's the model virtually finished. There's very, very little left to be done. A few tweaks here and there, maybe. As I said, I will definitely make those hands and feet bigger. And you can see now, I'm going into final detail. I've upped to the detail level of the model a little bit, so all these lines are coming out smoother. And I'm going into those sort of final refining details we've got lips, any finer creasing on his face, I think we do a little bit of wrinkling on his forehead, and obviously the veins that are going across his body, like his arms and everything. This, this is a really fun step to do. I've not gone as far as putting skin textures in, or putting like a worn hessian texture on his trousers, because again, it's not going to show on the printer. It's, why go through all the effort of the work if it's not going to come out in the end result? I mean, it's fine if it looks fantastic on a render, but if it's not going to show, then really there's no need to be doing it. Right, thanks for watching guys, I'll have a couple of pictures at the end of the final render of this guy, and there will be a painting video of uh, painting this guy almost exclusively with the airbrush as well. Um, so the model will be free to download, so if you want to download it, print it off and paint along, absolutely be my guest, that's sort of the whole point. And a lot of this model was sculpted specifically to present certain challenges with the airbrush. Because ultimately, that's what I do. I'm an airbrush artist, top and bottom of it. So this guy's been sculpted up just so I can get across some ideas to you all. There's a lot of fine detail work to paint in with the brush. 
and there's a lot of large overall shapes so we can practice our blending and our color shifting right thanks for watching if you like it hit that like button if you want to see more subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see any more of these sort of speed sculpts or any more detailed sort of work on sculpting thanks a lot Try Cute as hell, baby